Hi guys, my name is Michelle and I create hair, makeup and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Today I want to talk about CGM, using products that are meant for curly hair and then getting pimples. So this is something that happens very frequently. If this topic interests you, then keep watching. Alright, so it is very common to start CGM and use products that are CG friendly and then suddenly notice that you're getting pimples on your forehead and on your cheek. In today's video, I'm going to help you navigate this issue a little bit and try to be of assistance. So you've started CGM and you notice that you've started getting pimples, the kind that you've never had before in your life. And you're wondering if your hair products are causing you to have acne. Some of you will know that I've been on a little break from YouTube because I was struggling with acne. So in today's video, I'm just going to share the things that I know with you. And maybe that could be of some use to you. So as you guys know, I struggle a lot with acne myself. And in today's video, I'm going to try to share whatever I know with you guys. So the first thing that you want to ask yourself is what kind of pimples are you having? Are they blackheads? Are they whiteheads? Is it a pustule? Is it a papule? Is it a nodule? Or is it a cyst? This is the first step that you're going to take to identify exactly what is causing your acne. The first step in taking care of your acne is to use washes with benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid. However, in order to get your hands on medicated products, I would recommend you speak to a dermatologist. And given the times that we're living in currently, I would say that Dr. 24-7 is a really good way to contact a dermatologist and get a consultation sitting at home without you having to go out. So this is an app that I've been using for a while now. It is a trusted app. You can download it from the Play Store and then all you have to do is book a consultation. They have various specialists. So I would say book a consultation with a dermatologist. During your consultation, you can also send your dermatologist pictures, clear pictures of the kind of acne that you're having so that it helps your dermatologist understand your problem a little better. And then your dermatologist sends you a prescription all you have to do is follow the prescription that your dermatologist sends you and it's as simple as that. This is not very expensive either. A consultation will be around 300 to 350 rupees. So if acne is disturbing you, then the best thing that you can do is get yourself a prescription from a specialist. Now, not to say that Dr. 24X7 is the only app out there. There are so many other apps. However, I don't feel comfortable recommending it to you guys because I haven't tried these apps myself. That being said, you might be familiar with apps like Practo, etc., which are similar apps where you can get a consultation online. So as some of you know, I recently went through a bout of acne myself and I did contact a dermatologist on the app and let me just share what I did. However, please don't misunderstand this next section of the video as advice as to what you should do because obviously the acne that you have could possibly not be the kind of acne that I have. I'll insert some pictures right here. My acne has become so much better. I've mentioned these medicines before, but yeah. In the morning, I used face clean gel. In the evening, I used Deriva gel or Deriva, however you want to pronounce that. I also used the photostable sunscreen in the morning. And whenever I felt like my face was drying out and needed some moisturization, I used the Venusia cream. And once the acne got much better and I did not have any active breakouts on my face, I used Depi White Cream and I use this for my pigmentation. So whatever post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation I'm left with after the acne flare is done with, I use this on those pigmented areas and it's helped me quite a bit to reduce those dark spots on my face. Not to say that I don't have any scarring on my face, I definitely do. I have some scarring on my cheek, a little bit of scarring here on top of my nose, but it's clearing up pretty nicely and so I'm really happy with the medicines I used. Now, let's talk about a few general things that you can do to prevent acne in the first place. Alright, so the first thing that you can do is, 
If you notice that you have oily acne prone skin, then maybe leaving your prepo on overnight is not the best idea. Generally, the oil that you use when you're pre-pooing should do its job in two to three hours and there is no need for you to leave it on overnight, especially if you have oily acne prone skin. The second point, if you notice that you're getting acne because of your products, maybe consider cutting down on the amount that you're using or try to go for a leave-in conditioner that is a little more lightweight. If you have oily acne prone skin, then maybe it is a good idea to skip leave-in conditioners that are very heavy in oils and butters. The next thing that I want to point out, and this is something that I've mentioned quite a bit before as well, maybe you're not switching your pillowcase up frequently. In fact, that goes for all of your curly products. Make sure you change your satin pillowcase at least once a week. I would say if you can and you have enough pillowcases, then maybe change it every two, three days, especially if you have oily acne prone skin and you'll see that it'll make a huge difference. The next point, make sure you're cleaning and washing all of your accessories so if you're using a satin bonnet have you been using your bonnet for months without a single wash because you only have one bonnet so let's say you wash your hair every six days then maybe on day five it's a good idea for you not to wear your bonnet to sleep and maybe give it a wash so that the next time you wash your hair on day one you'll have a fresh bonnet to sleep in the next point, make sure you're washing every single thing that you use. Your styling comb, your detangling comb, the plastic cap that you use, that you deep condition with. So I would go as far as to say that every single thing you use with regard to curly hair. So your scrunchies, your shampoo bottles, conditioner bottles, leave-in bottles, detangling combs, whatever you use to deep condition, so your plastic clips, etc. Once you use all of these things, make sure you give it a good wash before you use it the second time. So this is gonna keep everything that you use nice and sanitary and you're not gonna have bacterial growth on your combs, on your clips, etc. And everything is gonna be nice and clean. And this is really, really gonna help you. It is a very good idea for you to disinfect everything after you've used it once. Ask yourself, when was the last time you cleaned your diffuser? If you're using it every single week, and you've been using it for the past few months, remember that there can be product buildup even in the bowl of the diffuser. All right, the next question that I have to ask you guys is when you're doing your skincare, you're in the toilet, of course, because you're cleaning your face. That is your first step, which is to cleanse. And then after that, where do you apply your creams and your lotions? Do you apply it outside the toilet? So today when you do your skincare, I want you to reflect and be mindful of everything that you do in between washing your face and applying all of your creams. Did you touch the doorknob? Did you touch doors? Did you touch the table? Did you touch the outer packaging of your skincare? Is it dust laden? Is this sanitary? Have you wiped this down? When was the last time you wiped down your skincare products? Are you using clean fingers? And even if you think your fingers are clean, are they really, really clean? Now look, obviously all of our skincare products have some kind of preservatives and it helps take care of exactly this problem where if you have dirty hands and you stick it into your tub of moisturizer or whatever, the preservatives that are in the skincare would help not let the product go bad right but it is very important to actually think and be a little mindful and ask yourself were my hands really clean when i started doing my skincare trust me guys some of you will really be shocked to think of everything that came in between your cleansing and your moisturizing step 
another point if you have a serum with a dropper bottle please don't be taking those dropper bottles and applying it to your face like you see on instagram those droppers have no business on your cheeks and your forehead okay so just take your dropper bottle drop it onto the palm of your hand or drop it onto this part of your hand and then apply please don't be taking your dropper bottles and then you know touching it to your skin and then putting it back into the bottle of serum and therefore it is very important that you give every single thing you use a nice thorough cleaning after use the next thing to ask yourself is are you a makeup user and if you are are you washing your makeup sponges and makeup brushes regularly after every single use let me just show this to you i use this today to wear my makeup but this will not go on my face again tomorrow okay because all of this it is a cesspool of bacteria and so if you're using makeup sponges if you're using makeup brushes it is a very good idea to clean them regularly for makeup sponges i would say please clean them after every single time you wash them there are videos on youtube where people cut open their sponges and they notice all sorts of growth inside so honestly if you have oily acne prone skin please don't be putting this to your face another question when it comes to makeup how do you apply your concealer do you take the wand and directly place it on your skin and do you already have acne because some of us will use concealer on our pimples and stuff right so ask yourself do you take your concealer and take the concealer wand and directly touch it to the areas that you have acne really think have you ever done that before these are some of the things that you should be mindful about if you're having acne and if it is recurrent and you don't know what's causing it all right the next point if you have bumpy skin so if you have white heads on your forehead ask yourself do you have dandruff a lot of the times when dandruff falls on your forehead you can be left with small 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 beady little white heads that form on your forehead that could be fungal in nature so in that case you know exactly what the problem is make sure that you're taking care of your dandruff the next point ask yourself are you going overboard with your product this is something that happened in my case i went too far with the serum and instead of using like one or two drops i use so many drops because sometimes we start thinking that more is more right but sometimes that's not true be careful if you're using oils as serums during the week one thing that you definitely must keep in mind is that if you're following cg and you're using a serum that is cg friendly if you look at the ingredients of the serum itself you'll notice that it doesn't have any silicones however it might have some butters and it might have some oils if that is the case and you already have acne then it would be a very good idea for you to take it easy with the serum not go overboard like i did and use just a little bit and just use how much you need and don't use more than that the last point that i want to make is if you're having acne and you know for sure that your products are causing the acne in the first place then it would be a very good idea for you to pause and stop styling your hair for at least a few weeks until the breakouts are not active anymore this is something that i did for the last few weeks i have not touched my hair i have not done anything to style my hair all i did was wash my hair condition my hair detangle my hair squish to condition and then thoroughly wash my hair out with water i made sure that there was no product on my hair and then i just braided it and i let it be stopping for one or two weeks and not styling your hair especially when we're in the situation that we're in you're probably not going out anywhere and so if you feel like you want to take a break from styling your hair please by all means go for it it is really not going to make any impact on your cg journey it is not going to change the texture of your hair it is not going to deter curl training from happening trust me you can just leave your hair in braids and in a few weeks when the acne is not active anymore just go back to styling and you'll notice that everything is fine it's not like you've lost your curls and you can't get them back not styling your hair for 2 3 weeks are not going to do anything to your curls your curls are not going to go away as soon as the flare up has stopped you can always pick up where you left off 
but it's very important for you to understand that sometimes you might need a break and it's okay remember that your skin and the health of your skin comes first and it is probably not a good idea for you to continue especially when you're getting acne and it's recurrent and it's keeping on happening because if you don't treat it in time and you keep turning a blind eye to it and you don't take a break and assess the situation and work towards it then you'll notice that one pimple will become two pimples two pimples will become four pimples and then the problem will go completely out of control it is much better for you to just take steps to address things and nip it in the bud as soon as possible now let me talk about a few other things that you can do if you have oily acne prone skin and if you know that you have cystic acne and if you have PCOS then i've had a lot of luck with these things that i've done and these are more lifestyle changes that have helped me with my PCOS with my acne in general number 1 make sure that you're cutting and curbing your dairy intake if you feel like milk is a very important part of your diet maybe try to source some milk that is hormone free or you can simply consider switching to almond or soy milk the second thing that you can do is try to reduce your gluten intake so instead of bread you can stick to rice or you can also get gluten free atta if you make rotis and stuff and maybe this could be a good substitute for you thirdly if you're smoking then try to reduce your smoking that is really going to help you with your acne as well The next point make sure that you increase your water intake it is very important for you to keep a track of how much water you're drinking so i'll just insert some footage right here what i do is early in the morning i make sure that my water bottles are full but i would say do this right in the morning so do this early in the morning that way you're accountable you know exactly how much water you've had just before going to sleep And it is also a very good idea to start drinking from glass bottles and not plastic bottles especially if you have PCOS. Filling your bottles right in the morning is going to help you know exactly how much water you drank during the day. Speak to your family members, tell them that the bottles that you've kept aside is to measure your water intake and trust me they will be very very supportive help you reach your goal. The next point, don't stop just at your water containers. It would be really nice if you could switch to glass and completely avoid plastic. I know this is easier said than done, but whenever possible if you can use glass and steel, this will be so much better for your health, especially if you have PCOS. And the last point, the last point is exercise. Exercise, the importance of a circadian rhythm, the importance of having a routine, especially now that we're stuck at home. A lot of the times we as human beings crave structure. If you feel like right now your life is very unstructured, you're going to sleep at random times, you're waking up really late in the morning, you're not exercising, you're not active, etc., maybe it would be a good idea for you to try to give yourself a little bit of structure. So hold yourself accountable and make sure that your circadian rhythm is on point, everything is going great. And you'll notice that this will make a huge difference. Add to that a bit of exercise and you will be golden. So that is pretty much everything I had to say about CGM, curly hair and acne. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, then don't forget to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to see more from me then you can follow me on Instagram. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Michelle and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.